Okay, thank you. Uh, perhaps um, the end of the last talk was a perfect bridge to my uh, talk now because um, we have developed uh, a new software which makes it possible to um, to pass uh, uh, Bell 2.0, and um, so um, so I'm working. Oops, I'm working at the Fraunhofer Institute, and uh, I'm mostly active in the moment in the Etionomy project, uh, which I uh, presented also on the last uh, Transnet meeting in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, this is an IMI project. Um, so, um, perhaps I should make it a little bit bigger and not, not look on the screen. Okay, here is an, uh, an advertising text of our software. So PyBell is a Python software package developed by the Department of Bioinformatics uh, at Fraunhofer Sky uh, that passes Bell statements, validates uh, their semantics, uh, applies common graph algorithms and allows uh, for the data interchange with common formats like uh, Neo4j, uh, JSON, uh, CSV, Excel, and SQL. Um, so um, PyBell uses ne uh, Network X uh, objects uh, in the background. Um, Network X is a software package for the creation, manipulation, and study of structures, dynamics, and functions of complex networks and perfectly fits uh, requirements to uh, develop complex, sophisticated algorithms for bi uh, biomedical uh, graphs. Our uh, software provides a simple API so bioinformaticians and scientists with limited uh, programming uh, knowledge can uh, easily use this uh, to uh, interface with spell graphs, uh, but it builds on a rich framework that can be uh, extended to uh, develop uh, new algorithms. Later I will mention some of the uh, libraries we have uh, are inside our um, uh, our PyBell software. So this is an uh, old picture from the um, Transmart conference in uh, in Amsterdam. So um, so we are since some days uh, are online on uh, on GitHub on Read the Docs, and um, I think I have already opened it. So uh, we have also some comments on. Uh, our design decisions and uh, so why we are not using RDF and uh, so and yeah uh, just read it make comments and write us uh, what you think about it so okay um, so we uh, so our software is um, Python 2.7 and 3.5 compatible uh, it's uh, have a very high uh, uh, code coverage, so of uh, I think in the moment 89%. So it's really well tested, and so okay. So and we are also on GitHub, and um, I will um, um, I will publish also my notebook uh, here in the. Uh, on this, um, but the software you find here uh, in PyBell. Uh, in the moment, we are also developing um, uh, a PyBell visualization software, which uh, allows um, better visualization of um, of Bell frame uh, of Bell graphs. Okay, back to the notebook. So, um, so shortly about me, so I'm living in Cologne, the, the city of Carnival, <laughs> and we call it the, the fifth season, so it's really a crazy time, so if you have the chance to come to Cologne, then you should come at the, at the Carnival. So, um, so before I, I switched to uh, the Fraunhofer Institute, I worked at different institutes, uh, uh, I start as a as a biologist uh, in, in the molecular molecular genetics, 
Uh, then I worked for a while at the Max Planck Institute for Experimental Medicine and uh, in the Department of Neurochemistry at the University of uh, Frankfurt and uh, for a while I was in the industry, uh, was responsible for a database uh, for the microarray uh, chip design and um, yeah, for a long time I was the main developer of the, uh, a brand, uh, the Brenner database. This is a, um, Enzyme database for uh, yeah for for enzyme information. Um, and since 2008, um, I'm working as a scientist in the data mining group at the Department of Bioinformatics Fraunhofer Institute. So uh, about Fraunhofer, so uh, so Fraunhofer is a tri tribute to uh, Joseph Ritter von Fraun Fraunhofer. Um, he was a German. Uh, Optician. Um, uh, so Fraunhofer founded in 1949, uh, now uh, 67 years ago. Uh, it's the lar largest European application oriented research organization with more than uh, 23,000 people and uh, with a research budget of uh, uh, about um, uh, 2.1 billion euro. Uh, about uh, our department of bioinformatics, so uh, Professor Dr. Martin Hoffner-Pizions, as uh, Keith already mentioned, is the, uh, is the head of our department, my boss, and uh, our research fields are uh, neural modeling, so where we are using Bell and uh, information and knowledge extraction uh, and text and big data analysis and several others, but it uh, takes too long to Okay, so um, perhaps I skip a little bit uh, all these uh, parts because we have already heard a lo lot and this always the, the old boring stuff. So we have a lot of data. So we have to, yeah, um, we have to, there's no possibility to read all this publication. So if you make a search, you find uh, hundreds, millions of, of hits in, in several databases. And yeah, you need a, a system where you, where you store uh, your knowledge. And um, so I think later, now it's already here. So uh, I have a, um, a header called biology. Uh, it's a very big directed and dynamic graph, not a table. So, um, and dynamic, I think what we learned uh, also at the first day here in the keynote, uh, so that is, um, um, so that's it. Um, the nodes in the network are very dynamic and uh, you will not always have uh, the, the same relationships as you expected. Um, okay. I skip this a little bit. Uh, so this is a lot of, about Bell. I think mostly of this we already have seen on several other slides. So, um, yeah, perhaps I directly come to the software. Okay, so this is one one of the slides, uh, one of the pictures. Uh, I'm starting our um, uh, our visualization tool. This is not a dynamic one, but everybody thinks it's uh, dynamically created, uh, and uh, only if they're clicking the the, um, the network changes and. Uh, so, but uh, I think what we can see here on on this in this picture, so that uh, it's um, the nodes are so heavily uh, connected that it's nearly impossible to uh, visually to uh, yeah extract any information out of it, and we need uh, tools to uh, yeah to better analyze this subnetworks and filter them. So um, here is a uh, state of the art um, of um, Bell. Uh, Ruby and the Open Bell framework. That's what we heard also in the last talk. So, um, so we had also um, problems to uh, run the scripts, and uh, we want to make it uh, a comparison to, to our software, how fast we are, and so on, and uh, yeah, test it against our uh, uh, results. But it was not possible. So. Okay, um, 
So we tested uh, also with the open bell framework how long, how long it took uh, with a small uh, corpus and with a uh, large corpus and perhaps uh, this was a, a problem with our configurations uh, could be again so um but for the small corps we needed uh, needed nine nine minutes around that but of course um the open bell framework provides a little bit more than we are doing in the moment and so it's of course it takes a little bit longer so why we developed uh, PyBell? So we want to provide an easy and fast uh, to install software. And in fact, it only takes eight seconds uh, to install um, the software. You only have to type in pip install PyBell. That's uh, that's all you have to do. If you are, and I think uh, I know that Dexter at least is a uh, Python user. Uh, it's very fast to install it, uh, and so. So yeah, we want to provide also the uh, software which can be used by semi-professional pro programmers and that, sh that should be also uh, Jupyter notebook compatible and uh, allows, yeah, so Jupyter, this is the software where, where I'm presenting in the moment my talk, uh, is very popular in the scientific world. So it's um, implementing a lot of different um, languages, but um, I think it starts with Python and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's just a great tool. You should, uh, should use it. Um, so we want to use it um, uh, our software also in combination with other data and uh, community established tools uh, like Pandas or SkyKit Learn, uh, a thousand other, other tools are available. Um, and we want to be as independent and as flexible to fit our user uh, requirements. Uh, ah, and uh, we want to make use out of uh, already established and well developed. Um, um, graph algorithms like uh, Network X uh, provided to us. Okay. Here we see now the list for uh, for PyBell. So um, the performance is really good, and uh, thanks to Charlie and uh, Andre, they did a great job. They really improved the speed a lot, and we are, I think uh, even this is now wrong because with the cached namespace and uh, annotation, it uh, took I think uh, 18 seconds to uh, to pass the small corpus and uh, five minutes the large corpus. Okay, but uh, perhaps the most uh, important thing also for uh, industry is that we are uh, Apache 2.0 and uh, yeah, that's yeah, and of course uh, PyBell 2.0 and um, that there are a lot of different uh, export formats available. So also the possibility to export it to Cytoscape. So, um, so main features I already m mentioned this is we are open source, so we are on different platforms um, online, uh, easy to install. Uh, most functions are on the top level of the package. Uh, it's very good documented and uh, extensible API. Users can they integrate their own algorithms uh, with their own data. Uh, we have a caching system for uh, namespaces and annotations. We are supporting several databases um, because under the hood we are using SQL Alchemy, so which is a database layer to a lot of different databases uh, like Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, uh, Microsoft S uh, SQL Server, SQLite, Firebird, and Sybase. Um, okay, later in the moment we are only using it for namespaces and annotations, but later we will also uh, use it for uh, storing your results out of the analysis um, uh, into the system. Okay, um, so for the parsing we are using uh, uh, a library called PyParsing for uh, the network algorithms. We are using a uh, network X for matplotlib, uh, which is very popular. We are, we are using 
uh, for visualization, we are using Matplotlib, and Pandas uh, is um, a high performance and easy to use data structure and data uh, analyze tool. So how uh, PyBell stores the data? Um, so this is quite easy. So we have uh, uh, a node identifier. Uh, in fact, this is a an, an tuple which is hashable uh, and a dictionary of uh, node properties and uh, the same for the edges, uh, except that there, these, uh, there are, of course, uh, two nodes. Um, here are examples uh, of a node and an edge. OK. Um, so this is a little bit redundant, but uh, yeah, it has several reasons to, to do it. Uh, so it's in fact, it's a, the, a repeat of the information we already have here. OK, now we come to a live demo. Uh, OK, uh, in the notebook, are, so if you're not so familiar with uh, Jupyter, are also some um, guidelines uh, how to install things. And OK, let's go lively through the, through the notebook. But uh, OK, good. OK. Let's quickly, okay, here I only set up some, some things. I'm checking if all the libraries are installed. And um, so in fact, to load from the URL um, the bell into your system, you only need one, um, uh, one comment. So it's PyBell from URL and so here it's backup, but perhaps I should um, I should rerun the whole thing. So we have a logging system giving you uh, um, information about um, errors and mistakes, and so so you have different uh, logging levels, so um, which you can use to um, yeah improve your bell or find out where's the problem. Okay. Okay, this is loading the small corpus, loading the large corpus. Uh, perhaps you should go by yourself uh, through this notebook, uh, which I will publish. Um, okay, so also accessing notes is very easy. Uh, you just uh, write uh, after you have loaded your object uh, in, for example, pi small corpus, you just uh, a dot node and then uh, a combination of the um, the abundance type, the namespace and the, um, and, the, and the name in the namespace. And of course, um, if you have a modification or something like that, you have to add this. Uh, but uh, then you uh, get all the attributes, which in this case is the same, but uh, um, so accessing the edges, uh, Okay, um, perhaps I should mention that we uh, made a very important uh, or, yeah, uh, it design decision uh, how we store the data. So we, um, we uh, when you have, an, for example, a kindness activity, uh, we are not storing this together with a, with a node. We are storing this in, in the edge. And so we have on, let's say, both sides of the edge, we have an, um, mm, you store the subject activities or the uh, object activities um, because we think this is uh, an attribute of the edge and not the, uh, the node because the node is a, a biological object itself and the activity is a, um, the, the relation, the, the the event or whatever. So, but um, so, and we think we should uh, we should uh, divide this. So this uh, also dramatically reduces the number of nodes in the network. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, here are some examples. Um, 
how to, in some lines of code you can make a simple analysis law like how many uh, so this the distribution of uh, functions in my network uh, but uh, perhaps the most are keen uh, on i think on the visualization tools we uh, starting now to develop and um, so already with network x you can uh, have n nice visualization tools um, I think these uh, these pictures are uh, sometimes very funny, uh, and uh, especially when you have uh, well distributed uh, connections between uh, uh, nodes uh, and edges, you don't see anything. So it looks like an eye or whatever. But uh, but uh, this definitely changed. If you come, uh, for example, here to our uh, Parkinson network, where we have. Um, uh, hubs with a lot of uh, of uh, edges to it, and then you see highlights in the uh, in your network. Okay, uh, so these pictures made with uh, Matplotlib, so but they are static, so you cannot um, zoom in, zoom out, and so that's the reason why we have used uh, we have developed also. Uh, a dyn dyn dynamic way to uh, show the data. Perhaps I should directly go to this. Yeah, here. Okay, you can zoom in and out. And if you go over, you can get more information. Oops, this is uh, also information. So this is automatically added uh, by PyBelt. So if you have a protein, we automatically extend the node uh, to the gene. Um, but we mark this also. It's this not originally comes from, uh, and this is, oops. Uh, so, and if you go over the, the edge, you get the information uh, behind the edge. So the evidence, the reference, and uh, so object and relation information. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, wait. What this is? Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps you should try it later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I d did here is uh, that I'm. Wait. Ah, this was an uh, so a, a use case. I, I, I used uh, transmart data from differential expression analysis results and overlaid uh, to our Parkinson uh, net. And I want to show uh, in this part of my uh, notebook uh, how easy it is to to reach in some lines of code uh, and uh, analyze your data. Yeah. Uh, so um, he here, for example, I'm just loading the um, the, f um, the result file from uh, Transmart uh, into a uh, Pandas uh, data frame, and I filter for um, uh, Bonferroni values uh, below 0 0.05, and um, here is the head of the, this table. Um, then I overlay uh, all the um, identified genes to our Parkinson network. And uh, as you can see, this is a little bit disappointing. So there are only, uh, in fact, only four uh, genes identified. Um, of, no, no, sorry, five. Um, so what in the next step, I'm uh, searching all the shortest passes be between these uh, nodes uh, in our network, which is really f in, in milliseconds, we uh, we find this, and uh, then I extend this network. So, um, and uh, in our online version um, on the server, we uh, all the um, edit nodes are in gray, so it's, that you can distinguish between the original identified and which ones was uh, autonomously added by the shortest path algorithm. Okay. Um, 
Ja. Ja. Ah, okay. This is. Some sometimes it's uh, it's, uh, it's association because uh, association we need in both directions because this is a it's a multi-directed graph. Uh, we uh, so to to calculate uh, shortest passes we uh, have to um, make the uh, the edge also in the other direction. And of course, uh, if there are two um, um, yeah evidences for that, then there could be also one and more uh, uh, more than one. But mostly these are associations or uh, positive regulations. But this could be, for example, I don't see it. So this is raw bell, but you, and you haven't built a cam out of this. You, 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 the, the, the fact that there's only one edge between nodes except for the associations is an artifact of having it be a, a lean bell file. But if I had a bell file that had 50 uh, supports for a given relationship, I'd have 50 edges. Yeah. Um, so perhaps it's a, a visualization problem. We should perhaps show this uh, edges uh, in a thicker way or um, so. Um, Yeah, so this is, uh, it's it's hot development. So I, I, I finished this uh, last night at two o'clock, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Then, okay, yeah, a lot of different other algorithms like betweenness, centrality, and so on, uh, which are easily to use uh, and analyze your, your network. Um, but I think I'm running a little bit out of time and I should come to the end. But all this will be available on GitHub. Da, 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 da. And so, ah, okay, export fu functions perhaps are uh, interesting for you. So uh, Neo4j and uh, NetworkX fits perfectly together. So they are, they are uh, both following the same ideas. So, and uh, in fact, we first started with, Neo with Neo4j and then we switched to NetworkX. Um, um, but Neo4j has this great language, this cipher language, uh, with this, uh, which is very similar to SQL. And um, and we, we we tested a lot uh, Neo4j, but in for some questions uh, of for some queries it was very slow, and uh, so then we decided to go back to network network X, and this was a good decision. And we can easily uh, yeah switch between both of these. Okay, and uh, so we have. So here's a screenshot, and we of course we have uh, we have or not let's say of course, but we have also an an export uh, to Cytoscape. So here's an uh, comment line um, execution of the program uh, with an error report, and here you can see uh, how it sh uh, shows if you load it in the in the system. So okay. It's actually an export to GraphML. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay, the take home message is, uh, is it's easy, it's flexible, it's fast. So use it and give us feedback. So um, everything is online only s uh, since some days. And so um, um, we want to support you. We are interested in co collaborations. So um, contact me uh, and I want to uh, thank especially uh, Andre and Charles um, uh, which mainly developed the software. Um, so with, uh, of course, months of discussions before, but uh, so this, uh, the hot development was in, uh, in the last months. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and we are very happy that we are online since one week or two weeks. Okay.